Hello from Hobo with Wood. We're back at it again, and we're taking another break from designing the pet box. Uh, been getting a few comments uh, on some of my videos that have been extremely helpful. And honestly, all of the education that I have, all of the learning, all the training, everything I've done with this light burn has been from watching YouTube channels, uh, videos similar to these. Uh, so I'm grateful for those that I've watched uh, <clears throat> some good channels. Uh, for those subscribed to mine who don't know about these, uh, you might want to look into the Louisiana Hobby Guy. He's a great, great source of information and know-how. Uh, Pop Paul's Workshop and Build Dad Build. Pop Paul's Workshop, Build Dad Build, Louisiana Hobby Guy. Some of my favorite ones to watch. Uh, but there was a comment. <clears throat> I, I did a uh, video comparing fill and offset fill and how much time savings you can have in doing offset fill versus fill. And uh, let's switch over here to... Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, so uh, I want to give a shout out here to... Daniel Boyer, uh, 15 hours ago, you posted in a response to this video that I put up uh, on fill versus offset fill, and extremely helpful. Thank you. And I wanted to make this video to show the difference between fill, offset fill, and flood fill. So Daniel's comment, this is the second video I've seen that doesn't get it quite right. There are two settings that you can use to get rid of excessive uh, traversal moves, and they do it, and they do different things. Flood fill. Set your type to fill, then go to the advanced tab to find this option. This causes it to fill contiguous, uh, uh, con continuous areas uh, without having scan across the entire piece, but it follows the but it follows the scan angle you have set. Now that talks about something that I haven't touched on. Uh, you can actually change your scan angle. Uh, and if you're not using uh, just horizontal and vertical, using different scan angles, he's saying that uh, offset ain't going to work. Uh, so, if you do, so if you have a square, it can be filled in from bottom, from top to right, and horizontal lines, your angle is set to zero or left to right if it's set to 90. Offset fill, this option ignores your scan angle and fills objects to follow their contour. So a square would be filled by making progressively smaller squares inside each other. And I had another comment from uh, another viewer. Oops, let's see, let's see here. Uh, Grinte. He warns about the speed at which this engraving is take place on the offset field and the potential for doing damage to your product. And his concern is also valid. And I think his concern and experience has been <clears throat> with offset field, it's moving at such a higher speed of travel that when the laser has to change direction, that that sudden change in direction could cause you to have a, a laser misalignment. Uh, so you want to be cautious with that. But let's do a quick demo here showing those three techniques, their advantages and disadvantages. Now, this is just a small design that has to do with the pet feeder I'm designing. I'm getting ready to start part three of that design. But I wanted to play with that feel, offset feel, and flood feel and gain the knowledge of what the differences are. And I had seen flood feel or heard of it before, but could never find it until he explained it that you go into feel, you go open up your layers, you've got the mode set to feel, and you go over here to advance. And there is the flood feel option. And you check that or uncheck it to turn it on. So I had, I had heard of it in a previous video from someone else, but they didn't show where it was at or how to engage it. So, again, thank you for your comment. That was extremely beneficial. 
if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because uh, I believe you would be a, a good wealth of knowledge too to help correct me when I say something stupid. All right, so um, let's look at this piece. This piece I currently have, uh, and <clears throat> for those who aren't aware, I have three layers here. This one is irrelevant because it's on the labels on parts that are not on the screen right now. I've got two layers on the screen, the cut line and the fill line. And honestly, if I was going to do this, the fill would take first and then place first and then the cut. <clears throat> but if you go over here to your cuts and layers and you highlight a layer and you right click, then it's going to show you all of the items on that layer. Come down to the next one, right click, and there's the items on that layer. All right. So if you didn't know that, now you know that. Um, so fill first. And it's not on flood fill. It's not on offset fill. This is just a fill with the line cut. And now let's take a preview at that and how long this is going to take. This is a very, very basic design. Two outline cuts on two passes. And that's another thing. Um, the uh, fill is a single pass, but I have it set up on offset fill, not offset fill. I have a single pass on crosshatch. And take a look here. So single fill, crosshatch. I do not have the line after fill. But crosshatch, I'm getting off subject a little bit, but crosshatch is when that laser is going to engrave that image all horizontal, then finish, and then come back and do it again vertical. So essentially it's doing two passes on that image that you get a really nice deep engrave and if i'm doing text or something very fine finely detailed and i want to really finish the look i'll do that cross hatch and then do a line after fill to go in and clean those edges up and makes a real difference in the quality of the output all right so uh, back to fill and this is a single fill with a cross hatch and then the cut lines on two passes preview this that's an hour and 56 minutes to cut that out. One hour, 56 minutes, and 34 seconds to do that basic, basic engraving. And the reason it's taking so long, the, all of this red is showing you the traversal moves that this laser is moving and not doing anything. Wasted time, wasted energy, and time is money. So a lot of wasted time here, a lot of wasted money. So how do we get rid of all those uh, excessive movements on this pattern? This is a, a really good time to use one of those offset fill or flood fill. And let's take a look at both of them. An hour and 56 minutes, right? Yeah, almost two hours for that basic cut. So if you were trying to do some production and crank these out, you, you don't have time for that. So let's go in here. Actually, you know what? Let's first, let's change this to the offset fill and see how that changes it from an hour and 56 minutes to 11 minutes. One hour and 56 minutes versus 11 minutes. Now, this is the offset fill. And let's take this down and let you see how that works. So you, just in case you didn't understand the explanation. So the, it comes in and it's going to do the design and it's increasing the width of that engraving incrementally until it meets the desired fill line. Now it's moving at a much higher rate of speed, speed uh, and those sudden changes in direction that take place here where it's that's where they said the potential of danger comes into messing up your product and or damaging the machine because it's herky-jerky. But I'm speeding it up. There we go. And this is, and I'm going to, well, this is where he was talking about on the, the squares. This is essentially a square it's doing. And it's just getting bigger and bigger by doing more and more squares. And now it starts its cut. But 
you get the idea, okay? So when we went from an hour and 56 minutes to 11 minutes and eight seconds. I would say, based on what I've learned from those comments and what I'm observing, offset feel because of the, you, you don't want to be even 10 minutes into a piece and have a laser jump mess up the image if it gets out of center offline. And then you got to start all over again because it doesn't matter how much money, time you've saved because now you've wasted product and the time to set up. So now by the time you reset up, get everything back, probably should have just done it to begin with the, the uh, good old fashioned slow-mo. All right, so let's take offset fill out of here. Go back to fill and go to advanced, select flood fill. Okay, so it was an hour and 56 minutes and 11 minutes. What does this come down to? All right, 29 minutes. So it's a happy medium. Now, how does this work? You see, I still got traversal moves on, but you don't see hardly any red in here at all. So just about every single movement that laser is making is productive. So there's really no wasted time here. Uh, but it's doing it at a, a slower pace and a more uh, efficient pace. Uh, or not efficient pace, but a more efficient engraving. Less chance of having damages. So you've seen on the offset field, it, it, let's say this is equivalent to uh, 12 passes to create that thickness of that engraving. Doing the message. Somebody just commented. Thank you. Uh, if it took 12 passes to create that engraved line, doing it on an offset field, let's look, and that was just doing 12 different around the perimeter to get there. When you do the flood field, the way it's working, is it's now doing that vertical feel, horizontal feel, and, uh, and it's just going back and forth within the width of that engraved area needed to be, so that it's not running, 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 running. I'll, I'll, and now it's moving up, but if you notice, it's moving incrementally up as it's going horizontal left to right. So it's not going all the way across a little feel here, a little feel here, a little feel here, back and forth. It's filling, 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 filling all the way around the perimeter of that piece. So this, I believe, will be my fill of choice to ensure I get a quality product, no chance of, of a backfire, misfire. So now we've looked at fill, offset fill, and flood fill. And again, I'll, I want to say uh, thank you to I don't know, say Grinte and uh, Daniel Boyer for your uh, comments. Uh, this is how I'm learning to use this software, and your comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, if you haven't, guys, subscribe to the channel. As I learn, I'll share what I learn, and as I comprehend or begin to understand what I perceive how things work, I'll share that too and let you correct me. <laughs> so, Thanks again for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.